The U.S. Pro Ski Tour and its entourage of international ski racers have returned to the Colorado Rockies. The first Interstate Bank Cup brings out thousands of fans to watch the world's top pros compete. Past champions include the 1990 Giant Slalom winner Sebastian Vitsum of Austria and last year's GS champion Obe Nigren of Norway. The man to beat, though, is Austria's Bernhard Canals. He is pro skiing's undisputed world champion, and this season he has skated to victory in every Giant Slalom event to date. Chrysler Plymouth presents the Men's U.S. Pro Ski Tour. From the Winter Park Resort. It's the first Interstate Bank Cup. And today's race, the Coors Light Giant Slalom Championship. Hello, I'm David Stanfield. Welcome to the western side of the Continental Divide, to the Winter Park Resort, Winter Park, Colorado, for this is 17th running of the first Interstate Bank Cup today, the Giant Slalom, sponsored by Coors Light. Joining me, the former founder and director of U.S. Pro Tour, Mike Collins. Mike, a great race side here. They do a fantastic job here. The course is lower hues, and it's been around since the beginning of pro racing. Well, this is the 17th running, David, so they got a pretty good idea of how to do it. It's a long, challenging course. Snow's good and hard. Should be a fun day. Last week, Heavenly Valley, we did not see Torius Birgay. He dropped from the number two spot to the number three spot. And yesterday, we had rounds 32 to the round of 16. He was in competition, but he was injured, though. There's no question he's not up to full speed, but his fellow countryman traveling mate, Ove Nigren, is in top form. Looking at the stats, he's been second to Knaus and Giant Slalom six times this season. Ove Nigren, the defending Giant Slalom champion here at Winter Park. Let's talk about Bernard Knaus. He's undefeated in GS this year. He did not race last year at Winter Park. This could be his day again. Last time Knaus won here was 89, I believe. Going over the stats, David, he's taken 70-something runs of Giant Slalom this year, Bernard Knaus, and he's only lost two or three runs, let alone losing a whole race. Some of the best turns in qualifying, and in yesterday's early rounds, was put on by Carl Toller out of Schladming, Austria. Toller is a rookie. He's a buddy of Knaus's, travels with him, and they're coming up right off the bat. First pair, round of eight, Toller and Knaus. Should be a great race. Expecting some fantastic racing here, a sunny day here in Colorado for the 17th running of the first Interstate Bank Cup, the Coors Light Giant Slalom. Stay with us. Today's Bennett Sports Special of the Coors Light Giant Slalom is being brought to you by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers, proud sponsors of the U.S. Men's and Women's Pro Ski Tour. By Coors Light, the Silver Bullet is the right beer now. By Nuprin, if you've got body pain, Nuprin. And by American Airlines, the official airline of the U.S. Pro Ski Tour. Welcome back to the beautiful Colorado Rockies and to the Winter Park Ski Resort as Chrysler Plymouth presents the Men's U.S. Pro Ski Tour. Today, the 17th running of the first Interstate Bank Cup. And the race, the Coors Light Giant Slalom. David Stanfield with Mike Collins and Mike Lower Hughes is a ski run here, and it's actually an off-camber run. That means, David, it naturally is a lot higher on one side than the other, so a lot of snow has to be moved in here. It's a very fast course. The course is in great shape, and 17 years, they do it right here at Winter Park. A fantastic giant slalom course. Let's check on course and weather conditions right now. Let's go to the top of Lower Hughes and Corey Carlson. Corey? David, the racers are all in a great mood up here at the start, and why not? We have beautiful temperatures and great snow conditions for today's giant slalom. Currently 30 degrees under clear blue skies, no wind, and again, great snow conditions, hard packed powder. Today's race here on the Lower Hughes Run has 17 gates over three man made jumps and was set by an all American pair, Dave Stapleton and John Jack Miller. And David, John Jack Miller didn't qualify for today's event. That's right, Corey. John Jack Miller did not qualify, but he had to set the course. We had some other big upsets. Rookie pros did not qualify, one from Austria. Well, we had Tiger Shaw, the American, Felix McGrath, also Ben Akers are all out. They qualified, but they're out of the competition. Kolbaker, a hot Austrian, he didn't qualify. So there's a lot of big names that aren't in there. Urban Weiberg was the fastest qualifier. It's his first trip to the round of eight, so there should be some upsets. Should be a great race. Let's take a look at the fastest qualifiers. Here's a look at the fastest three qualifiers. Combined runs on Thursday, Bernard Canals, Obey Nigren, and Ben Akers out of the U.S. The fastest single run was turned in by Urban Weiberg. Qualifiers by country. Top country, Austria with eight, Sweden and the U.S., seven apiece. France has three qualifiers. 
Norway, Slovenia, two apiece. Italy, Russia, and Switzerland, one racer apiece, making it to the round of 32. Our American qualifiers, Ben Akers, John Buxman, Felix McGrath, Tiger Shaw, Dave Stapleton, Mike Taché, and Troy Watts. The top of Lower Hughes, the run here has got some shadows, and we are set to go racing. Quarterfinals first run of today's Coors Light Giant Slalom. Here's the ladder. Ove Niagara will meet Tomas Cheeseman. Sebastian Fitzum meets Urban Viberg. Matthias Bertold up against Werner Herzog. Carl Toller up against Bernard Kanaus. Five of eight are Austrians. And our first matchup, we will see Ove Nygren, a fourth-year pro out of Oslo, Norway. Ove has had a great year, but in the giant slalom, he's still looking for his first victory. Last year, he had five of them. Last week, he had his first slalom victory, but he still wants to, to win over Bernard Kanaus. He's up against Tomasz Cheesman, the second-year pro. Nine years on the Yugoslavian national ski team, three-time Yugoslavian national champion, and the 88 Olympian has been skiing better each week. He wants to win over Knaus, David. Everyone wants to win over Knaus, and Knaus has been skiing absolutely flawlessly. Out of Aspen, Colorado, our official starter, Julian Ulrich. And the cadence, four lights and a green. The gates open up. And on course. Could even start Nigren on the red course, Seisman on the blue course. Ove has had six second place finishes and all of those losses have come at the hands of Bernard Knaus. Good course for Ove, it's very fast. It's very exciting here. Ove way offline, there's a real hard spot in that red gate. A lot of the races have been having problems with Ove's back on track right now, but this is a high speed course and it definitely favors Ove style. He's got the lead over Seisman right now. Great recovery by Ove. Into a tuck. Tripping the timing lights first, Ove Nigren, .079. Next pair, Matthias Bertold, Werner Herzog. Good matchup, two talented Austrians. On the far side, Matthias Bertold out of the hamlet of Gargalen in the Montefon region of Austria. Last year's Rookie of the Year champion. He is currently fourth on the Pro Tour. And this man here, former world champion, world pro champion, sixth year on the Pro Tour out of Austria, currently 16th on the U.S. Pro Tour. No top four finishes, looking for a, a big victory over Matthias Bertol. We'll put him in the top four today. Herzog skied real well yesterday. It's first trip in the round of eight. He's skied in Japan the last few years. And as you said, a former world champ, we've had another either Farge up there or a malfunction. Farge on Herzog. <laughs> Werner Herzog taking the barge one more, and he will be eliminated from competition unless he makes it into the semifinals, and then he'll be awarded one more as well. So Herzog a little anxious getting on course quicker than Matthias Bertold. Bertold, very talented in both disciplines. Bertold had a second two weeks ago at Steamboat and GS third at Heavenly. Races are out. Looks like Herzog could be a little bit out of the start. You have to be cautious when you have that one barge against you. But Bertold skied very, very strongly yesterday. He's really coming into his own. Very steep up here, deceivingly steep, and it's a long GS. As we said, it's very, very fast. You can see Bertold just flying off these jumps. Herzog's had his best race to date here on the U.S. Pro Tour, making it to the round of eight. And he's coming on strong again against uh, Bertol right now, Dave. On the blue course, Werner Herzog. But by one, four, eight, it is Matthias Bertold. Bernard Knaus, the man that would, uh, would be king. He is king all year long. Last year, he dominated. He's the fourth year pro out of Schladming, Austria. Currently first on the tour, over $83,000 in prize money. Seven for seven, has won all giant slaloms. But if you had to pick one guy that could knock him off, fellow Schladming Austrian rookie Carl Toller, currently 13th overall, one top four finish, and that was the GS, a Saturday GS at Steamboat Springs. He had some fantastic turns yesterday. Toller was very exciting to watch yesterday. He just flies off the jumps. He skis a little bit like Niger in the fact that he really points him downhill, lets him run. Good even start right here. It should be exciting run from Toller. Toller's coming off an injury. Didn't ski last week at Heavenly Valley. Knee injury, but he seems to be fine right now. Let's watch Knaus on the blue course. He skis flawlessly. No mistakes. That's the secret to his skiing is that he gets so much power on the ski and he makes no mistakes. He's a little bit lead up a Toller right now, but Toller's hanging right in there, David. Toller can really get down low and recover and carve a wild edge and still maintain. It is Bernard Canals, so .297. Canals, a big advantage after that run. I thought it'd be a lot closer. Back up top, Sebastian Fitzum, the fifth year pro. Umken, Austria, lives in the Hotel Valley. His family owns the Hotelhof Inn. Currently fifth on the Pro Tour. Joined the Pro Tour back in 1988 as a youngster and uh, 
looking for a win here today. He's had a couple wins, two career wins in his uh, in his pro series. Uh, Urban Viberg, second year pro out of Sweden. First time we've seen him in the uh, top four, or at least the top eight. Fantastic race arena. This GS has three pro bumps and a total of 17 gates, and uh, it's kind of like a super G, according to some of the racers. It makes it a little difficult for the races going from light to shadow because there is a rut from yesterday in this course, so it's harder for them to pick them up when pick the rut up when the lights are changing. On course, Urban Viberg, Sebastian Fitzum. Fitzum on the red course, right-hand side. First run, round of eight. Should be an interesting run. Both skiers like the speed here. Remember, there's one tough turn on that red course. This course is a skiing very, very evenly. I don't think one really out favors the other one. One isn't a little easier than the other one, but that red course, ah, oh, Viber, two straight out of the course. Sebastian Fitzum will take the advantage. I believe it's going to be a 1.5. Coming up next, the round of eight action, second run as the first interstate bank up. The Coors Light Giants Slalom continues from Colorado's Winter Park Ski Resort. Stay with us. Here's a look at the past champions that have competed here and won here at Winter Park, Colorado in the first interstate bank cup. Since 1976, we've had giant slalom racing. Yarley Halsness has won this race three times. One year, there was a super giant slalom won by Dave Stapleton and four downhills back in the days of the World Pro Skiing Tour. We are set with the round of eight action, second run. The first interstate bank up, Coors Light Giant Slalom, presented by Chrysler Plymouth. Ove Nigren with the advantage point, 0 7 9 over Tomas Cheeseman. And this should be a good matchup. Cheeseman uh, was quite excited about last week's second place finish to Nigrant in the slalom event at Heavenly. And uh, he's improving uh, every week. Fourth in GS at Mount Snow. Good all around skier. But he's got his work cut off for him. Nigrant likes this hill, likes the event. He's won here before. He really likes to let him fly. Exciting skier to watch. Let's see how Obey does on the blue course. I think the blue course may be just a little easier because of the snow conditions. Cheeseman staying right with him now. Very steep up top here over that first pro jump. Cheeseman and Nygren turn for turn. Big wide turns here in this GS on Lower Hughes. Nygren opened up a little bit of advantage now, but they're pretty much neck and neck. Small advantage from Obey, but he takes the heat. Good job for Obey Nygren. As we come off the ski tips, I believe that's Sebastian Fitzum. Team Rosignol in the starting gates. And in the multicolored outfit, you can't see his head, but that is Dieter Lang. And he has been coaching at least three or four of the top skiers on the tour. He is coaching Bernard Knaus, Carl Toller, and Sebastian Fitzum, along with Roland Pfeiffer. He's coaching Knaus. He's doing a very good job. Uh huh. Handling all the. Uh, all the day-to-day -day activities of being a pro racer. Sebastian Fitzum, the fifth year pro, Unken, Austria. Two career wins. Urban Viberg has got to make up a 1.5. The second year pro is on the red course right-hand side. Giant Slalom, it's a fast course, it's very difficult to make up a 1.5 without Fitzhugh really making a, a drastic mistake here. Viberg has to get out in front. Of course, little Viberg, very, very wide. And that was that tough turn that Obey was talking about on the red course. Very, very slippery. You missed the rut there. You missed a lot of the speed that you can develop out of it. Viberg has a little bit of lead there, but not a 1.5. Urban Viberg wins the second run in the round of eight. Point one eight six. Not enough. So. Sebastian Fitzum advances into the semifinals and will beat Ove Nigren. Right now, let's go down to the finish crowd. Corey Carlson is with Sebastian Fitzum. Well, David, in the first run, uh, there were some problems there for Sebastian Fitzum uh, keeping up with Urban Viberg. He had the lead, but unfortunate mistake that had to make you uh, re relieve some pressure there. Yeah, he was a little bit ahead of me because after the first jump, I think the blue course appears to be a little bit faster for one or two turns. And he was exactly that time ahead of me, you know. I would have got a good chance in the second run, but now it's, it was a lot easier to have a 1.5 second advantage. Okay, well, well rested. Good luck in that next round, David. Thank you very much. Back up top, we see Matthias Bertold out of Gargela Montefan, Austria. He has the advantage 0.148. Matthias Bertold is on the blue course, on the red course, right-hand side. Werner Herzog, the sixth-year pro out of Maria Alm, Austria, currently 16th on the pro tour. No top four finishes yet this year. And 
back in 1988. He was third overall in the Pro Tour, and he was the 88 World Champion. That's on the far side. On course. Not much of a lead by Bertol, 0.148. Herzog definitely has a chance here. Of course, is running about 27 seconds yesterday, so it's a fast GS. Bertol has the advantage right now. Tough turn up there by Herzog. A lot of speed was dumped on that one turn by Herzog. It's steep. You have to carry that speed coming into the flatter section right now. Bertol is really putting the hammer down. Excellent skiing by Bertol. Really rides that ski well, and he's going to cruise into the semifinals. Bertol. Easily advances into the semifinals over uh, Werner Herzog. Herzog, good showing yesterday, gave it his all, but Matthias Bertol will advance and will meet either Carl Toller or Bernard Knaus. Let's pick up the action. It's steep right here. You can see the races are getting thrown by the ruts up there. The skis are bouncing. Herzog, a lot of snow coming off the downhill ski. That means that he's losing a lot of speed. The more snow, the less speed you're going to carry. Let's go to the finish crowd. Corey Carlson is with Matthias. Well, David, earlier we talked about how it would be difficult for the racers to adjust to a, a rutted course first run of the day, but Matthias Berthold in those two runs, you didn't show any signs of trouble. Good skiing. Yeah, I have a pretty good feeling also. It's not the type of course I like. It's uh, very fast, but I feel pretty good. And here we are again, maybe skiing against Bernie in the semifinal. And uh, let's do something different to the last couple of times. Please. Yeah, what, what could you do different against Bernard? Uh, just uh, skiing like in Heavenly Valley, second run against him, uh, making no mistake. And the problem is he, he starts very good and then he puts pressure on you and forces you into mistakes, but uh, anyway, we will All see. Right. Well, David, he's already planning his attack against Canals. We'll see if Bernard meets him. Well, like in skiing, Corey, you definitely planned several gates ahead. Matthias Bertol plans races ahead, and he's done that in the past as well, but his predictions have always come true. Carl Tolo, though, is going to try to change that. The rookie out of Schladming, Austria, has got to make up .297 over Bernard Canals. Canals on the red course right-hand side. Undefeated in giant slalom this year. Taller needs to ski cleanly. He needs to get all the ruts just right. He needs to get a little bit of a, an advantage over Knaus, put a little of that pressure on Knaus. Knaus hasn't had that pressure all year. He's led all the way through. Knaus is through that tougher section on the red course. He has the advantage coming into this run, 0.297 over Taller. Knaus touches down fast. Taller's out of the course. Bernard Knaus advances to face Matthias Bertol. Taller gets thrown backwards on his skis and has to miss a couple of gates. A safety move for Carl Taller, a disqualification on this, the second run in the round of eight. Bernard Knaus moves on into the semifinals to meet Matthias Bertold. Here's Taller's mistake. Taller, is, he's a colorful skier, as we said. He really lets the skis fly. Right there, he doesn't quite absorb. I think he's down a little too low, finished the turn a little late, so he didn't have a chance to suck that jump up, consequently out of the course. Let's go to the finish corral right now with our world champion, Corey Carlson. Well, thank you, David. Bernard, you know, we watched Carl Toller yesterday in the earlier rounds. He skied flawlessly, but then he steps into the gate with you, the man to beat, and all of a sudden it looks like he forgot how to ski. What happened to these guys? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, first of all, I ski good. I made perfect runs so far on this hill. And you know, if you make just a small mistake here on this fast course, you can't see it with us, but uh, if you make a small mistake, then you're just a little bit behind, and that's enough. Well, good luck in the next round. Thank you. David, back to you. Thank you, Corey. Mike, you can't let off the gas pedal at all on this giant slalom course. No mistakes, that's the key. The first Interstate Bank Cup continues from the Winter Park Ski Resort. The Coors Light Giant Slalom semifinal action up next. Skis are actually precision tools, which is one reason you'll find them to be so expensive. Using your skis to the maximum potential can actually mean more effortless skiing. So fine-tune your skiing skills by learning how to carve. When you look at a ski, you'll find that it's narrow in the middle and wide at the tip and tail. This is called side cut. This basic design feature gives skiers the ability to carve the ski as opposed to skid the ski. Advanced skiers use their edges much more aggressively carving feels crisp and fast. The ski is designed to turn in an arc. It's the clean, fast, and efficient way to ski. Racers know that the secret to good skiing is the ability to edge the ski, which with practice will give you the skill to carve smooth, accurate turns. After spending so much money on your high-performance skis, put them to good use by carving your turns. It's a great sensation. 
and really the only safe way to ski fast and under control on hard packed snow. For the Coors Light Ski Tip, I'm Steve Mayer. By the way, if you want to time yourself against the pros, try the Coors Light Ski Challenge. Time yourself against the pros, take the Coors Light Ski Challenge, a fantastic opportunity to see how your time compares to the Coors Light Pro Ski Race Team. These pros will actually race at participating ski resorts and set a pro time for that course. Now, if you're not there to go head-to-head -head with the pro, you can still race against his time every day of the season on the dual slalom self-timing race arena. It's the easy way to challenge yourself on a more difficult course. Take the Coors Light Ski Challenge at these great ski resorts. Set to go racing, semi-final first round, Ove Nygren versus Sebastian Fitzum. Nygren, defending Winter Park champion, giant slalom champion, five victories, 15 top four finishes. In fact, a big win last week at Heavenly Valley in the slalom format. He's up against Sebastian Fitzum. Fitzum, the fifth year pro, started his pro career back in 1988, uh, made it into the top four a couple of times, but his big victories came in 1990, one here at Winter Park and one at Sugarbush, Vermont. Semi-final first run. Today's Coors Light Giant Slalom, part of the first Interstate Bank Cup. Sebastian Fitzum and Ove Nygren. Nygren on the far side, red course, and he would be favored in this matchup. The fourth-year pro out of Oslo, Norway, Sebastian Fitzum, fifth-year pro on course. Both races are very quick out of the start, Fitzum and Nygren. Nygren got a little bit of an advantage there. Nygren touches down first. Steep, steep section right here. Watch the races being bounced in and out of these ruts. Nygren really went to fly on that red course. Down in good shape. He lost a little bit of the speed on that downhill ski in that one tough section, but he's got the advantage right now into that second jump area. Fitzum touches down first. It's going to be a race to the finish line into the we go it's going to be it's going to be over Nigrin red course point zero four seven what a great race and back to the top Matias Bertold Bernard Canals another good matchup Bertold would love to upset Bernard Canals Matias Bertold Gargela Montevan Austria currently number four on the US Pro Tour now he's into the number three spot by virtue of Torius Berge being eliminated in yesterday's early round Bernard Canals undefeated giant slalom the fourth year pro out of Schladming Austria he is uh, seemingly unbeatable, and as Europeans say, just quite honestly, I made no mistakes, and he does not make very few mistakes. When he does, he tells us about it, and it's hard to pick up when, in replays. Oh, he's just, the, his technique is just tremendous. Good even start up there. Bertol lost to Knaus last week at Heavenly in the semis. Let's see if he fares a little better today. He's got the advantage right now on that red course. This is where Knaus skis very well on the steeps, carries the speed well. You don't want to make any mistakes up there. Bertol skied that red course, that one tough turn pretty well, but here comes Knaus on the blue course. The advantage is definitely Knaus. He carries that speed. So so well, opens it up. He's got another gear, David, and he's using it right now. And he puts it into a tuck across the finish line. Point three eight three. Mountain Madness of Winter Park, Colorado, hosted the informal Snow Scoot Pro Race Grand Prix. There was only one rule: no biting. After an hour of banging handlebars, we asked the racers who was the fastest. The fastest rider? Take a guess. Take a guess. What do you think? Huh? Uh, Nygren. Most dangerous uh, uh, driver was Nygren because he was out of control, like his king. You know. uh, yeah, it was a really a fishy course, I think, and um, uh, I guess uh, Uwe Nygren was the trickiest fish <laughs> in the course. Uh, but uh, Bernard was the fastest fish again. <laughs> I think uh, John Boxman because he's not so heavy, you know, and he's a little guy, so he was the fastest. I'll tell you what, I really don't know because I was last every run. Would you, is your style friendly or dangerous? Dangerous is wild. <laughs>
Nigren versus Sebastian Fitzsum. Semifinals, second run. The 17th running of the first Interstate Bank Cup, presented by Chrysler Plymouth. Today's Coors Light Giant Slalom on Lower Hughes here at the Winter Park Ski Resort, Winter Park, Colorado, panning up the Giant Slalom suit, the spider suit of Oven Nigren. Nigren has the advantage, 0 .047, not much. That's just a very, very small mistake on this GS course. You can make up those four tenths. And on the red course, the right-hand side, Sebastian Fitzsum, and again, Fitzsum probably a little disappointed after that first run. He thought he was uh, in the lead and was going to win that. Fitzsum with a good start. Fitzsum definitely has the advantage on that red course. He got out of the gates a little quicker. Obey's coming on now on that blue course. Ove and Fitzsum. Turn for turn, Marin just here into that second jump area. Fitzsum's down first, has a little bit of advantage. He's hitting the ruts very well. He's up at the toughest section. Ove's going to have to really turn it on here into that last jump area. Nigren's down, and he has a... Oh! He was behind the skis. A terrible mistake by Ove Nigren. He had the advantage. I think he pushed it just a little too much coming off that last jump. Perhaps just a little too straight. Let's take a look at it. Ove is in good shape right now. He had that lead after the first jump, after the first heat. You can see that Ove is going to be in good shape here. He, he comes just a little bit too much to the inside. He's sitting on that inside ski right there, unable to make the turn. Ove Nigren, that's the little mistake, but that's a big mistake. For Bernard Knaus, anything less than a victory today will be a, a, a major upset. He is undefeated in giant ball all the season. The tough turn that Fitzsum is talking about is after this jump on the red course. If Knaus doesn't have any real problems with that one turn right in there, he should be able to ski to an easy victory. Here's the turn right here. Knaus skis that very, very well. Just nice and relaxed and loose. You watch the giant slalom technique. He really lets the skis flow down the hill. He's in good shape. Bertol is out. Bernard Knaus is in the finals. Matthias Bertold, uh, a mistake, and he is out of competition, similar to Ove Nigrens. And into the final, Sebastian Fitzsum will meet Bernard Knaus. Look at Bernie right here. Lays that ski right in that rut. He's very relaxed in the upper part of the body. He's able to absorb a lot of the chatter marks, a lot of the... the uh, Real tough, tough sections that are coming up right here. You can see the ski in and out of the turns. He's just so, so relaxed. Bernard Canals undefeated in Giants Slalom, going for his 37th career win. He's in the finish corral with Corey Carlson. Corey? That's right, David. We know he's skiing well. Bernard knows he's skiing well. Bernard, I'm going to ask you a little different question now. You're racing Sebastian Vitsum. If you were his coach, what would you tell him to do going up there to race Bernard Canals? If I were Sebastian's coach, there isn't the one thing what I could say. Battle did a medal. He has to go fast because... I'm very, very fast today. Okay, well, good luck in that finals, Bernard. Back to you, David. The honest Austrian. <laughs> Pedal to the medal, and I'm very fast today. Well, Bernard Canals, can he win his eighth giant slalom of the year? We'll have to wait and see. We'll return to Winter Park Resort with the consolation heats and the championship match between Sebastian Fitzsum and Bernard Canals as the Coors Light giant slalom continues. The popular Pro-Am race is a traditional event during the first Interstate Bank Cup Pro Race Weekend here at Winter Park, with proceeds from the race being donated to the National Sports Center for the Disabled. Five amateur skiers are placed on a team headed by one crazy pro racer. Yeah! Total of 27 teams are matched up as evenly as possible, and when racing begins, the competition is fast, fun, and furious, especially in this unique triple slalom race format. We invite a lot of our bank customers up. In fact, we've got about 1,000 customers up here this weekend. Uh, they participate in the Pro-Am. A lot of them have raced. A lot of them are buying teams. We've got 27 teams that we sold for $1,000 a team. Um, and they'll all participate in the silent auction this evening. So it's been a wonderful event. Uh, we think we've played a part also between us and Winter Park of keeping pro racing going. It's a race to the finish line. Get there as fast as you can. The excitement of Pro-Am racing here at Winter Park was great fun for everyone and for a good cause.
Now it's time for the American Airlines Something Special in the Air Advantage Run of the Day. It happened in Friday's round of 16 matchups between Italy's Marco Tanazzi and Slovenia's Tomasz Cheesman. Tanazzi on the blue course, left hand side, had the time advantage by .022. Here, in their second and final run, Tomasz Cheesman made some beautiful turns to come back and win this race by point. 2-1-2, Advantage Cheeseman, and he moved into the quarterfinals. American Airlines, sponsor of today's Advantage Run and the industry's first and foremost frequent flyer program. As the crowd waits and anticipates a great final matchup, we've got our consolation matchup. We have Ove Nigren and Matthias Bertold, last year's champion Ove Nigren. It's a very talented Matthias Bertold. And we have Sebastian Fitzum and Bernard Knaus in the finals. But first and foremost, our consolation match, Matthias Bertold, Gargalen Austria, Gargalen Montafon, currently number four on the Pro Tour. And again, we've mentioned he moved up to number three. Ove Nigren, number two on the Tour out of Oslo, Norway, the wild man. Ove's going to lose a couple of slots here to Bernard. And at this point in the season, halfway through, all those points really count if anyone has a chance to knock off Knaus ready to race and in the gates long before his competitor Matthias Bertold on the blue course left hand side now getting set up trying to regroup after a somewhat disappointing run for Ove Nigren actually both DQ'd in their semi-final second run our overhead cam looking down at the starter left hand side you can see that is Ove Nigren skiing for Solomon and skiing for Rasagnal is Matthias Bertold Great race, great race side. A phenomenal staff here at Winter Park. A lot of history here. 17 years. A lot of great pro champions have uh, skied on this hill and won. So. First run, consolation match. This is for third and fourth. And if you're going to make 10 runs, you might as well make third place money and third place points. And the battle rages right now. Matias Perpold on the blue course and Obi Nigren on the red. Obey had a good turn on that red course, that tough section right there. Bertol had the misfortune of being in the same bracket as Knaus, and you don't know how well you're skiing until you come up against Knaus, and he's been just dominating. Good run there by Bertol. Bertol takes that run. That was some good, good skiing, good, clean skiing there. Matthias Bertol, 1-6-1, .161 advantage in the first run of the consolation match. Back at the top, we've got Sebastian Fitzum, Bernard Canals. Canals has defeated Mike Taché, Ben Akers, Carl Toller, and Matthias Bertol. Canals has got 36 career wins, and uh, he is a two-time world champion, the defending national champion. He's looking to keep his clean slate in the GS. But Sebastian Fitzum, good friend, the fifth-year pro, can possibly do it. He's got a couple GS victories back in uh, 1990. He... Uh, he has the energy. Last week at Heavenly Valley, Knaus defeated Fitzum in the round of eight, Bertol in the semis, and Ove in the finals. But Fitzum is the only racer this season to beat Knaus in the Cayman Slalom. Good even start. And Sebastian Fitzum with a slight lead. Fitzum is skiing on that red course. We get Knaus on the blue. Let's see, in the steep section right here, if we have any mistakes, here comes Fitzum into that tough turn on the red course. Skied that very well. Skis bounce just a little bit, and here comes Knaus. Here's where he really develops that speed. He's got a little bit of a lead now coming in. Here's Bernard Knaus, about almost half a gate right now. Knaus into the finish line. It's going to be Knaus' heat. Bernard Knaus, point two two zero. And it's a good advantage in the giant slalom format to win by two-tenths of a second for Bernard Knaus. Coming up next, we'll determine the top four finishing positions with the consolation final, followed by the championship run. The Coors Light Giant Slalom, part of the first Interstate Bank Cup, continues from Winter Park Resort. Stay with us. The Winter Park Resort, a 67-mile drive northwest of Denver, Colorado, in the Vasquez Mountains of the Arapaho National Forest. Winter Park is the closest major ski resort to Denver and made up of three big mountains, Winter Park, Mary Jane, and Vasquez Ridge. This season marks Winter Park's 52nd year in operation. 19 lifts, 106 trails, and 1,115 skiable acres covered by an average annual snowfall of over 360 inches. Winter Park, for the love of skiing. But don't forget the summers. Winter Park is a year-round destination resort.
Chrysler Plymouth has been presenting some great ski racing on the Women's Pro Ski Tour. Most recently, the Chrysler Plymouth Northern Championships, Boyne Mountain, Michigan. Day number one slalom, won by Linda McGeehee Walsh. Then day number two, Beth Matson. The first time in 10 years, two Americans have won back-to-back -back in a single weekend. And here's a look at the current standings. At top, with a big lead, Katarina Glaserbierna from Sweden, followed by Linda McGee Walsh, Roswita Radishal, and Beth Madsen. Consolation match, second run. As Chrysler Plymouth presents the Men's U.S. Pro Ski Tour today, the 17th running of the first Interstate Bank Cup, and it is the Coors Light Giant Slalom. And again into the gate first, Matthias Bertold. Bertold with, with the advantage here, a very slight advantage. And there's Ove Nygren. Looks like he is more determined than ever. Does not like losing, does not like coming in second, and the least thing he would like is coming in fourth Oh, place. these guys hate to come in fourth. Anything but fourth. Any other place they'll take, but fourth place is, ah, waste of the day. Ove Nygren's first win came in 1990 in the giant slalom format, the last race of the year in Aspen. And then in 1991, he won five GSs, and this year, well, he's had numerous runner-ups in the GS, but he has one slalom win at Heavenly. He is on course and pulling heavily on the blue course. Six second place finishes for Ove. He's not going to finish second today. Bertol skiing very, very well on that red course. He's holding that edge very well. Here comes Ove, letting him fly on the blue course. we got an excellent ski race coming up here. Ove has to make up point one six one into that last jump area. Ove, that's where he had the problems against Knauss. He's got the advantage right now. Is it going to be enough? Point one four nine, not enough. Oh. Matthias Bertol captures third place here in the giant slalom at Winter Park. Great ski racing there. They're neck and neck. Lead changed a little bit. Ove skied that last part of the course probably better than he's had all, than he has all day. Bertol has been very solid on his skis. No mistakes. Getting a lot of pressure out of those skis. That's where Ove had the problem against Knaus, but he was able to hold on right there. But Bertol, no mistakes. He was able to get that by a couple of hundredths of a second. A fantastic run. Both competitors giving it their all. We're told third, Nigren fourth. Let's go to the finish corral with our consolation finishers with Corey Carlson. Well, another exciting matchup, uh, David. Ove, a little bit off today. At least you weren't second place for the umpteenth time. Uh, but uh, good skiing. Yeah, we're, uh, but, uh, Matthias was very, very good in the first round and have a clean run now. And he skied good today. And that's the way it is. All right, good luck next race. And uh, Matthias, you did ski well today. For a guy who said he didn't really care for the course, not bad third place. Yeah. I lost against Bernie again, but uh, first time in career I was able to beat Ove in Giant Slalom. And I'm satisfied with myself today. Yeah. Well, the role continues for Matthias Bertolt, finding himself in the top four all the time this season. Up top, we have our finalists, the tenth and final run. Sebastian Fitzum and Bernard Canas. Canas with the advantage over two tenths of a second. Fitzum is on the blue course, left hand side, and he's got to do some concentration, and then he's got to actually do some incredible skiing to defeat Bernard Canas. Well, if I was his coach, David, I'd tell him to put the pedal to the metal and go like heck, because he's going to need to if he's going to beat Bernie today. Don't look back, don't look over, no peripheral vision. You don't want to see what Bernard Canas is doing. Just focus on uh, this so-called giant slalom course, which a lot of the racers are saying the speeds are like a super G. Very, very fast. Fitzum has to get the lead and has to get Knaus in a little bit of trouble. Knaus is on the red course. There's definitely possibilities on that one gate after the second jump to do that. And that has to be a strategy. That's the only way he's going to take Knaus out. Bernard Knaus in 1989 when he joined the Pro Tour, three GS victories, 1994 GS victories. Last year, eight giant slalom victories. And thus far, he has won all seven. Pretty clean slate. Perfect record for Bernie. He's approaching his 80th Jan Slalom win race. Oh, barge, barge. Barge on Bernard Canals red course. Bernard has barged out of the last two slalom events he has been in. Lower left, watch Bernard Canals push on the gates just a fraction too early. All it takes is a little bit of pressure from the hands to cause that light to go off, and that is that constitutes a barge. If Bernard barges again, he's out of the competition. Fitzum would win. This is a big advantage for Fitzum, being able to get a little bit of a jump coming out of that start. Good crowd on hand. 
Colorado's favorite ski resort to Winter Park brings out the uh, the thousands here, and it's actually a, such a big ski area. Three different mountains, three different resorts here. Mary Jane, Vasquez Ridge, and here at Winter Park. Plenty of room to ski. It's the most popular area for the Denverites, and this is the social skiing social event of the year for the people of Denver. Bernard Canals knows that. He did not make it here last year, took a break from competition. He would like to come back and win his second giant slalom here. Fitzum really has an advantage here. He can take a little bit of a chance, a little bit of a risk, and try to hit it perfectly, see if he can get the jump on Canals coming out of the start, because that's going to be very important for him if he's going to win in this last heat. Three years ago, Bernard Canals won this GS. Two years ago, Sebastian Fitzum won. Two former champions up against one another. Vitsum, left-hand side, blue course has to make up .220 to take the title. Vitsum, the only skier who's beaten Canals on the hill this year, came in slalom. Bernie didn't take any, uh, he didn't hold anything back there. Excellent start by Canals on the red course. Races very even over that first jump. This is where Fitzum has to make a little bit of a move right here. He has to keep the pressure on Canals, see if he can force a tough turn on that red course. No problems with Bernie right there. Canals skiing as flawlessly as ever. Fitzum, a little bit of problem up there. Canals has the event. Fitzum out of the course. Bernard, Canals clean, sweep through the gate. Fitzum is okay. Hopefully, Canals makes it a clean sweep for the season in GS. Bernard Canals takes yet another giant slalom win, his 37th career professional victory. Sebastian Fitzum giving it his all, and you can see the speed. You just don't recover quite easily. A fantastic run by Canals and a wild one for Sebastian Fitzum. There must be a little bit of a lip on that last jump. Is that, so you see that Fitzum is in a little bit of trouble right here. He makes that turn on the uphill ski, and he's definitely not in really good shape. As he approaches this last jump, the skis go up in the air. The same thing happened to Taller. The same thing happened to Ove. He just loses that downhill ski. He's out of control right now, and he's going to take a slide for life through the finish line, through the last GS panel, and I hope Sebastian is okay. I don't think it was a real tough time. Tough, uh, tough fall. We pick it up once again. Fitzum, a lot of problems right here. He's getting thrown way back on the skis, but he didn't set up coming into the jump. But I think there may be just a little bit of a hook, a little bit of lip on that jump that's giving these races some problems. Ten runs at uh, 9,000 plus feet. He's definitely tired. Maybe a little snow burn through his GS suit by riding the snow on his back hip, but he is okay. Bernard Canals is the happiest man on the mountain right now. And uh, Corey Carlson is standing by with the f in the finish crowd with our two finalists. Corey? <laughs> we'll let Bernard catch his breath. Uh, Sebastian, earlier this afternoon, or before your run, your first run with Bernard, I asked him if he was your coach, what would he tell you? And he said, put the pedal to the metal. And it looks like you did it, but a little too much in that final run there. I had a pretty good run until the mistake. I was a little bit too straight. I just tried too hard. And then I came over the bump, totally wrong direction. <laughs> and I had to fight until the finish. I was a little bit scared over the last jump because I was so wild. Well, second place, congratulations. A good roll at Winter Park. First last year, second place this year. Good job. And uh, Bernard, here we are again. First place, uh, big smile, a bit of a relief here. Uh, good skiing. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's not that much what I can say. I just uh, skied perfect all day long. I had a couple really good runs. It was uh, great for me. And uh, because I like the fast course and uh, the hot snow, all season long, you've been saying taking 10 runs in a day has been really difficult. Well, today, because we had the round of 32 and the round of 16, you only had to take six runs. That has to feel pretty good. Yeah, it feels a little bit better, but here in uh, Winter Park, it's a high uh, altitude, and uh, it's tough uh, also, and uh, tomorrow is slalom, and this is going to be a long slalom, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Well, congratulations. Catch your breath, and uh, David, no signs of slow slowing down here. Bernard Canals, unstoppable in the giant slalom format. Mike, your final thoughts. I don't know what these guys are going to have to do for the rest of the season, David, but Knauss is just so dominating. The race is for second place, and you just hope you're not in Knauss's bracket because you know you're going out early. And those are the final results. Knauss, Witzum, Berthold, and Nygren. A couple of big upsets. I would say the first and foremost, our defending champion here in the GS at Winter Park, Ove Nigren, a fourth place finish. Quite disappointing. Ove really didn't ski as well as he has all season long, David. A couple of big mistakes, and that put him out of the competition. But our top three finishers, very happy. Matias Bertold, uh, happy about a third place finish. Sebastian Fitzum, great showing, but he did not win nonetheless. Bernard Canals, the happiest man on skis. A lot of times in competition, the best team or individual doesn't win. So far this year, by far and wide, the best skier on the tour has been Bernard Canals, and he's won every event.
Congratulations once again to Bernard Canasta's 37th pro career victory. Next stop for Bennett Sports, we go to California, Northern California, the Mars Incorporated Cup from Squaw Valley, USA. Check your local listings. On behalf of Corey Carlson, Mike Collins, I'm David Stanfield. So long from the First Interstate Bank Cup at the Winter Park Ski Resort. Today's Bennett Sports Special of the Coors Light Giant Slalom at the Winter Park Resort, Winter Park, Colorado, has been brought to you by Nuprin. If you've got body pain, Nuprin. By Coors Light, the Silver Bullet is the right beer now. And by Chrysler Plymouth, a division of the Chrysler Corporation, proud sponsors of the 92 U.S. Olympic team. Hotel accommodations for the staff and crew provided by the Rain Tree Inn in Winter Park, Colorado. Grand transportation provided by Hertz Rent-A-Car. Check out the special low business and vacation rates at Hertz. Air transportation provided by American Airlines. American offers ski packages to Europe, Canada, and the Rockies, so call your travel agent or American Airlines.